Good afternoon. It's Tuesday, it's noon, and it's time for Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm your host, Tim Apicella. In my first show, I quoted Washington State Transportation Secretary Sid Morrison. Back in the late 1990s, he offered the following statement of wisdom that applies to traffic problems not only in Washington State or here in Hawaii, but er very much applies to everywhere around the country. And he said, there is no silver bullet solution to the region's transportation woes. The best ammunition is instead silver buckshot. We need a scattergun of solutions attacking problems with rail, bus, ferries, concrete and technology, and focusing on smart cards, the smart roads, from HOV lanes to hot lanes, to telecommuting and rideshare and vans and bikes. Vanpool is one of those critical silver buckshots. We need this in our arsenal to address the reduction of traffic, especially from <laughs> Ava and Kapolei area down to downtown. With me today to discuss this important program is Kanani Iaya, Account Manager of Enterprise Rideshare. Thank you so much for joining us today. I very much appreciate it. Well, thank you, Tim, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm dying to hear all about this because it's a relatively new program, or it's, it's mm -hmm. been re-kind of um, formulated, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I think that took place in August. Is that about yes. right? So, reformulated, reintroduced, right. and I'm very happy to share more information about Enterprise Rideshare because it is part of Enterprise's urban mobility strategy and it is part of transportation mm -hmm. and our long-term commitment right. to sustainable transportation. And this is a partnership with the city, is it not? It is, And we'll yes. talk a little bit about that later, but yes. just give me a, kind of the rundown and uh, mm -hmm. let us know about the program. Well. Enterprise Rideshare has more than 20 years of experience uh, overseeing and operating vanpool programs across the United States and um, offering very, very flexible, unparalleled fleet service. Um, and we're very thrilled to be able to partner with the city and county of Honolulu um, and do this to support the community of Oahu, um, support the community of commuters and the Oahu Van Pool Incentive Program. Mm -hmm. Okay, well let's let's talk about the mechanics because you know a lot of times mm -hmm. people drive and they see one of these van pools on yes. the road mm -hmm. and I'm sure the question is how did they get that? Mm -hmm. How can I get one? So, so let's, let's kind of go down the mechanics of um, how someone can actually get a van pool. Absolutely. All they have to do is contact us at Enterprise Rideshare. Mm -hmm. My number is 808-543-1526. Um, or you can email me, and I think my email will be on the screen and shortly. Yeah. Um, and just tell us that you are interested. Mm -hmm. We'd be more than happy to share the program with you. Um, specifically with regards to the Venpo program that the city is sponsoring, there should be a minimum of five passengers, up to seven. Larger vans can accommodate up to 15 passengers. Right. So seven passengers, not including the driver. There are eight passenger vans, right? Uh, they are actually minivans, comfortably seven passengers, seven. including the driver. The driver, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you need a total of eight. Need a total of seven in a minivan. Yeah. Then we have 10, 12, and 15 okay, passenger vans. Okay, good to know. Mm -hmm. So getting a driver is a hard part, right? Actually, there is a nice incentive to be a driver. Mm -hmm. um, everyone is a participant. There are riders who choose not to be drivers. We encourage uh, there be at least two, perhaps three or four, as many drivers as possible in the group, uh, just so that the main driver primarily can take vacation or perhaps need a sick day. The van pool will continue its route every day. Mm -hmm. um, but the incentive to be a driver is that driver will be able to use the vehicle for personal use after hours and on the weekends. Nice. Yes. Very Do you have nice. any kind of, um, I remember back in the day, some drivers would take advantage of that and probably not in the best ways. Did you have any kind of mileage restriction on there, how f how how much a driver could use the van? Yes, actually we have a fuel uh, card um, benefit mm -hmm. that ties into the program and it is based on the actual round trip commute on a daily basis and then again on a monthly basis. And then we also cushion that with a couple of hundred miles for the personal usage. Anything mm -hmm. over that, that driver for that week or that month would come out of pocket for additional fuel. Right. So if I'm 
stuck on H1, mm -hmm. and I'm driving in from uh, Eva to town, mm -hmm. and I see one of these van, vans next to me. Mm -hmm. Am I thinking, why should I get that? Why should I be in one of those? And what are the benefits to me? You want know, let's discuss maybe some of the benefits that mm -hmm. someone might conjure up um, to say whether this is a good, you know, a good idea for me or a good fit or good fit for me. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, there are several benefits. So the nice thing is that we at Enterprise, we provide the vehicle and we have a very wide selection in our fleet of vehicles to accommodate several different sizes of van pool groups. Mm -hmm. uh, so we provide the vehicle. We cover the costs for insurance and the insurance will cover everyone participating in that van pool group. We also provide 24-7 emergency roadside service. We also cover the costs for the maintenance and any repairs that vehicle needs. Should the vehicle need to stay in the shop overnight or for several days and nights, we provide a loaner at no additional costs. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. There is so, one additional benefit that ahead. I'd like to mention, sure. and it's called guaranteed ride home. Mm -hmm. And you know, you probably have been ill at work and had to leave work a little bit early to take care or of yourself kids. or your child right. ill at school and you get the call from the school that you need to pick them up. So guaranteed ride home is to answer those um, instances. So if you're part of a van pool group and you need to break away from the van pool group, you would just give us a call right. and let us know what the situation is. We would contact our nearest enterprise branch they will work up paperwork to get you a loaner, come to your job site. And drop it off for you. Yes, drop nice. off the vehicle to you, have you sign for it, but there's no additional charge. Right. Give you the key and you're on your way. Is there um, a limit on how many times a year that could be utilized? Yes, the limit is three per person mm -hmm. uh, times a year. And um, all we ask is that when you do return to work to bring the vehicle with you to work, right. give us a call and we'll come arrange for someone to come and pick it up. Door-to-door -door service. It's very convenient. Kind of like that. You know, that is one of the major reasons why people decide not to ride share is mm -hmm. the fact that they say, I can't afford to be stranded if mm -hmm. the event my child or yes. something at the house or some, some kind of emergency that I didn't anticipate, mm -hmm. um, you know, happens. So by, yes. by providing that incentive, yes. that really takes away a lot of people's reasons to say, I, it won't work for me. Yes. So good for you. Yes. I mean, that's, good, that's good to attach that to the program. Um, let's talk about personal benefits because sure. um, I think there's a lot of personal benefits that prevent people from thinking why, why ride share is even a good idea. I mean, I'm so focused on driving, you know, sitting in traffic mm -hmm. for two hours or two and a half hours, I don't even realize what's happening to me. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I've had some people on the, folk, on, the, on the show here that actually did have a two and a half hour, three hour commute from mm -hmm. Eva, and they didn't realize how their life was being compromised. Yes. Um, it's kind of like, you know, slowly boiling. You don't yes. realize it. Yes. So, you know, let's talk about some of those personal benefits. And I'm thinking, number one is stress. Yes, absolutely. That is number one. So rather than driving and um, having to deal with perhaps anger management and stress, you're relaxed in a very, very comfortable um, vehicle with some of your coworkers and friends or family. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's the number one benefit. Yeah. Um, you get now, to work. I'm the employer. I also want my employee to come to work stressed. And I was free. just going there. Yeah. You get to work. You're refreshed. You're not stressed. Um, increased productivity. Um, in positive attitude. All of those are benefits on a personal level. Right. Additional personal benefits are financial. So here you have a vehicle where all the costs, including insurance, uh, maintenance, repairs, 24-7 emergency roadside service, how many people have that, are all taken care of and yeah. are all provided. So financial costs on yeah. a personal level. And when it comes to insurance, a lot of people will call me a month or two later and tell me how much they're saving on their insurance once they say, I'm only using my personal vehicle right. on the weekends. Right. And so so they, there's additional they give you cost a break. savings there. Well, they give too. you about 10 to 20 percent break. I, yes, I more yeah. like 20 to 25 percent. Oh, That's bad. what I'm hearing from not my bad. customers. Yes. Yeah. No, it's great. Yeah. And the additional cost may be par parking expenses. You know how expensive parking spaces are here in Honolulu. Yeah. Here you have a van pool and perhaps we have some companies that will provide a, a space at no additional cost to their employees who do van pool 
And then if they don't, you have five, six, or seven people that will share in that cost. You know, we're going to not go to commercial break just yet, but when we do, um, when we get back, I want to talk about what's in it for the employer yes. to help out. Okay. Because that's a huge component of mm -hmm. success for your program. It sure is. But uh, we'll get to that later. Okay. Um, what's, what's the goal of, of Enterprise Rideshare? I know you probably have a, a set number of vans you want to see on the road, and I'm sure you have some other ancillary goals. Let's, let's talk about some of those. Well, the primary goal, not just for Enterprise, but for the city and county of Honolulu, is try to get as many people to share their commute um, instead of everyone being um, individually driving. Share their commute. If they work together, they may not even have to work together, but work close by, say on the same block, but live in the same neighborhood perhaps right. and live in the same community and share the same work schedules. Definitely that is an opportunity to ride share, to right. van pool. Um, that's a huge uh, benefit for the state, for the city, is to reduce traffic congestion. And while you're reducing traffic congestion, you're reducing the horrible, damaging CO2 emissions right. in our atmosphere as well. Yeah, I went to your website and you guys um, advertise it about 12,500 pounds? Yes. Per month? Per month. Per month. Per van. Per van. Yes. That's pretty good. It's awesome. That's lot, yeah, that's, that's a lot. Here in Hawaii, I mean, we don't have any pollution ordinances or laws at the moment, but there right. are definitely in California and other states. Absolutely. Um, but why wait? I mean, we live in paradise now. We, let's, let's keep it paradise. Yeah. Let's talk about, well, for me, one of the reasons I would want to consider either getting into a carpool mm -hmm. or a van, van pool would be, I want to get into work faster. Mm -hmm. I want to use that HOV lane. Mm -hmm. How much faster do you think I'm going to get from, say, Eva to town if I, if I utilize the HOV lane? And is this comparing to driving alone? Of course, yeah. Oh, definitely. You probably get into work about 25 minutes faster, mm -hmm. depending on exactly what your commute is. Right. It could be more. It could be 40 minutes. Yeah. Now, this is kind of, I'm taking a left turn off of uh, the van pool program. Okay. Um, one thing I've noticed that when HOV lanes become very popular, mm -hmm and you still allow the two-person carpool, the average mile per hour to get to town from that HOV lane slows down because it's becoming more and more popular. Yes. Do um, you think there's a time and place that we're going to increase that to a three-person or, or more? I think there is an opportunity. Um, if van pool does pick up, um, but then a lot more people do start van pooling and mm -hmm. sharing their commute, they may raise the limit from two to three. Um, like they lowered it right. um, to help. So I think... Because um, originally it was three yes, back in the day. Yes, yeah. it was three. So I think they will um, just to accommodate more people that are van pulling because that is the goal, is to get as many people to share their commute, get out of their individual cars and share the commute to and from work. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know if you saw, because you're here, yes. and I don't know you had time to look at the front page of the, the newspaper today, but they were talking about the potholes. Mm -hmm. And given all the potholes that we have, mm -hmm. that's really hard on, on your vehicle. It is. On your personal vehicle. I mean, Absolutely. it really does amount to hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a year that we're paying for mm -hmm. our own vehicle mm -hmm. to endure the potholes of this fair city. Um, Absolutely. If I'm in a van pool, I don't have to worry about that, do I? No, you don't yeah. have to worry about <laughs> like that. Like wear and tear my car is like. Yes, because your car will now save the mileage, number one, and the wear and tear yep. that you normally will accumulate because you're driving individually. So the wear and tear will be on our vans and our vehicles. And you make a good point when you talk about the potholes because the more and more vehicles that use those highways and byways, those, that's what's causing the wear and tear of the streets. That and, and the, the lack potholes. of asphalt. <laughs> 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 Political comment, I'm sorry, you know, it's just one of those things. Um, so, so here you have a program, and it is truly a win-win-win all the way around, right. no matter which way you slice and dice it. Yeah. Um, not only shares your personal cost and expenses for additional repairs on your vehicle, new tires and rotating and everything else, but it also saves the city and state repairs on the roads, on the highways themselves, by having less vehicles on the highway, right. more people sharing their commute. Okay, well, you were, we're not done with benefits because I think there's more to discuss mm -hmm. and we're going to do that as soon as we get back from our commercial break here. So okay. I'm Tim Apicella. It's Moving Hawaii Forward and we'll be right back.
Aloha! How you doing there, lassies and laddies? This is Angus McTech here on Think Tech Hawaii, and on my favorite show, Hibachi Talk, with my good old buddies, Gordo the Texada and Andrew the Security Guy. Please join us every Monday, no, it's Friday, every Friday, from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii, and you can also find us on YouTube, Hibachi Talk. Aloha! I'm Jay Fidel, host of Life After Statehood. And I do this with uh, our regular contributor, Ray Tsuchiyama. Uh, and we try to make sense of all that has happened in Hawaii, all that is happening, and all that should happen. <laughs> Ray, what do you think of that show? I feel delighted to be part of life after statehood. Since after 59, so many things happened to the state of Hawaii, yet things could have gone in other directions. And that's what I'm fascinated about, that Hawaii has had a great history, but could have an even greater future. There you go. I believe that. I'm with you all the way. Ray Tsuchiyama and me, Jay Fidel, we do it as much as we can on Life After Statehood. Come around and see what we have to say. Thanks. Aloha. Welcome back. And we're here to discussing the Enterprise Rideshare Program. And uh, let's continue where we left off, and that is sure. benefits to to the employees as mm -hmm. why they might consider uh, getting into a van, mm -hmm. van pool. And the last item I wanted to talk about is maybe um, not direct financial incentive, but kind of indirect financial incentive. Mm -hmm. And uh, that might pertain to IRS. Mm -hmm. So tell me what you know about that, because I'm sure most employees don't realize they have that benefit sitting there. Mm -hmm. and the ride share program it does have a pre-tax benefit associated with it and we definitely bring that to everyone's attention whom we speak with because it is very important and it is an additional financial benefit to be had and people should know about it. Um, we also bring that to the attention of business owners whom we meet with and focus on introducing the Rideshare Van Pool Program to, to assist them with any of their transportation needs for their employees. And it's an additional employee benefit mm -hmm. that does not cost an employer anything. Yeah, it's very, it, very easy to set up. Yes, it adds another benefit to your employee package. And the pre-tax benefit can be used also by the employer. So there are savings for the employer right. to be had. So when I was in your business, I think the pre-tax benefit was $55. Mm -hmm. uh, where are we at now? $255? It, uh, the last I heard, but I know there are changes coming, uh, the last I heard it is up to $130. Oh. But it I is... I got my facts um, up on that. Okay. But there is changes being made right. and there will be more to be had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you take 130 mm -hmm. and times 12, mm -hmm. that's not a bad little pre-tax uh, mm -hmm. benefit to, Very to nice. be sitting there for you. Give yourself a raise. You do. You mm -hmm. literally give yourself a raise on yes. that. So absolutely. That's very important. I want to talk about why employers should get involved in this. Mm -hmm. um, what, to what benefit uh, would an employer see to try to promote and get, you know, potentially their employees mm -hmm. into a van pool? So, you know, let's talk about some of that, some of the things they might want to consider. Um, sure. Well, you touched on it a little bit earlier when you talked about the stress and relieving you of stress by participating in a van pool program and then arriving to work refreshed mm -hmm. and having a more productive day with a better positive attitude. So right there, those are two benefits. Um, I as an employer would appreciate absolutely. Yeah. Um, there are additional benefits if you're an employer and you have minimum parking and you'd like that parking to be used by your customers who come and visit. Um, that frees up parking spaces from your employees parking there. So definitely a, a huge benefit for employers with very limited parking spaces um, is a huge benefit. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm going to get back to the stress point, and okay. that is, you know, now companies are very engaged in proactive health care. Yes rather than reactive health care. They're yes. trying to get their employees in exercise programs, stress reduction programs mm -hmm. like yoga and you know, all these things. Yes. Well, why don't we take the first number one thing that causes stress in people's lives and that's traffic. Absolutely. So I could see that as a real cost savings mm -hmm. in the health care part of things. Yes. And the usage that health care has on a, an employer's you know, usage. Yes. So um, let's talk about also some program elements that an employer can do that try to 
help support okay. bands, um, mm -hmm. either to either get them started or once mm -hmm. they're started, um, maybe some program elements like um, what's it, flex time. They do offer Does flex that really time. Help? Yes, they absolutely do offer flex time to employees who well, share. Not all employers, though. Not all employers. Right. And there are several different um, incentives that employers use to support the Vanpool program and encourage their employees to participate. And, and that is one of them. Another one is free parking right. or a discounted parking rate or um, a stall. Some of them don't even offer a yeah. stall, mm -hmm. but if you're van pulling and you have six other people participating, they will offer you a stall, um, maybe free of charge, maybe a discounted rate. Yeah. Yes. I, re I distinctly remember that um, by having front door or van preferential pools, parking. Preferential parking, preferential yes. parking yes. people go, wait a minute, that's not fair. Yes. And then they go, well, gee, I don't have to walk a few blocks or maybe yes. I can just get a better spot. Mm -hmm. So that's, Absolutely. you know, I think that for real, whatever reason, that's a real incentive mm -hmm. for employees to, to actually stop and think. You yes. Know, why? And some of the employees, um, especially for example, construction or contracting companies, um, they have their base yards, but the job site has very little or no parking at all. And you can see all the construction that is taking place here in downtown Kaka'ako or in Waikiki. And there's very li limited or no parking space at all. Mm -hmm. So here is an opportunity to have them use these rideshare vans to shuttle their employees right. to and from their job so sites. That's a really good point mm -hmm. because now I don't have to rent uh, additional services or yes. hire a driver necessarily. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. Very good point. We have another company mm -hmm. that um, has over 5,000 employees at one campus, one location, and their employees find off campus parking. And it could be a mile, maybe two miles away from their actually workplace. So they have our ride share vans that actually work as shuttles to pick up these employees and bring them back to their main work site or the campus. And then after their shift, they jump in these rideshare vans and they return them back to their vehicles at the parking lot that they are parked at. Right. Do you folks go to the employment site and I forgot what the term was, zip to lunch, where you invite employees from a similar zip code and um, have maybe a similar start time, invite them to a lunch yes. and see if there's any possibilities there? Talk, talk yes. about that. So one of the benefits that we offer employers who are very interested in our program is we do a, a mapping analysis and we ask the employer for just a list of the employer's streets and oh, zip okay, codes okay. because we do respect the Privacy right. Act um, and that's all we need is streets and zip codes and then the shift, um, their work schedules. And so we have what is called Zimride, which is the largest mapping uh, program available and we run those streets and zip codes through that program and it does a very nice mapping analysis and provides you with potential van pools coming out of every zip code of your employer base. How successful has that been? It's not always easy getting people together it's not always easy yeah. um, to get the information, but more and more companies are providing it to us because there is more and more of a need by employers to help their employees yeah. with transportation or to help them um, provide solutions for transportation services to get them to work and back. You know, transportation traffic problems is everyone's, everyone should be invested in that. And there's yes. everyone, not just the employees, but the employers should have some skin in the game yes. too. And I can say without a doubt that once rideshare becomes part of the culture, mm -hmm. that these employers realize, hey, I'm providing a transportation benefit for very low cost, yes. yet it's a benefit that's used almost daily. Mm -hmm. And most employers yes. don't realize that, you know, a lot of benefits that employers mm -hmm. offer, they're yes. not recognized or remembered by their employees. Right. But this is a daily reminder that I'm it getting is. a benefit from my employer. It is. And I, that alone, as an employer, would would be a motivation for me to be very much involved yes. with trying to get some of these van pools for Oh them. yes, absolutely. And it is an awesome benefit um, for your employees. Um, and it doesn't cost the employer anything. That is so key. Yeah. Um, it reduces their cost. Well, they, could let, they could let the purse strings loose a little bit and <laughs> offer up. A, you know, let them, let, you know, employers of the world, or at least in uh, downtown, open up the purse strings and let's sponsor a lunch 
But you come down there and you form vans. We'd love to do that. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, We'd love to do that. We'd love employees to be stakeholders in this with us and with the city and county of Honolulu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Yes. Um, they also get a tax incentive. Do yes, they, not? they do. They get, uh, was a payroll tax incentive? Yes. And I don't remember at this point in my life <laughs> how much they're getting, but uh, it's, it's, it's something. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's not costing them anything to have this program um, for their employees, but in addition to that, they're getting a savings um, as well. Okay. So there's a benefit now, to Now, when you work with companies, are you finding that the companies are willing to appoint an individual at that company for lack of a better term, they're called an employee transportation coordinator, a focal mm -hmm. person who's going to you know, entertain questions mm -hmm. from their employees about either the van pool program or mm -hmm. how to get matched into a carpool mm -hmm. or you know, what transit routes may be coming to my work site. Mm -hmm. Are you finding that happening at all? We're finding that happening with companies that are interested in the program okay. or that have a need uh, for the program. Yes, absolutely. They are providing a, a point of contact person for us to work with. Okay. Anything else you're seeing on the employer side that's encouraging that you think, um, are you seeing, um, when, for example, flex time, you would mm -hmm. think, okay, um, that doesn't cost anything. It just mm -hmm. allows the employee who's in a carpool or a van to have that little bit of leeway mm -hmm. in case it takes a little bit longer or something happened on the roadway to get to work and, and right. not be penalized. Right. Um, what kind of policies are you seeing with flex time with an employer? Is it... 10 minutes? Is it a 15 minute leeway? Is it a half hour? Uh, um, it's usually about 15 minute grace period is what it mm -hmm. is. And I'd like to see more of that um, from employers. And I'd love to see a lot more employers participating um, and encouraging their employees to participate in a program like this. Because like I said, there are so many benefits to be had by everyone um, that you really can't put a price tag on it. Right. Yeah. How many vans do you want to see on the road? Is this a two-year program, a three-year program, five-year? Is there any set date to this incentive partnership you have with the city? Well, right now it's a two-year program, two -year, and we're okay. hoping that it will continue mm -hmm. and that the program will have longevity. Okay. Um, and that's when you will definitely see the benefit not only for the city and county of Honolulu, but you will see the benefit for the community as well as the employers. And your website said, um, was it a, how many was the goal? I think your website said, was it 100 vans on the road in the next two years, or was it more than that? I can't remember. Actually, we're, we're trying to get 100 vans on the road yeah. um, in the next year, a little over a year. Okay, that's aggressive. Yes. Because they're not easy to form. They're, they're not, not easy. E and it's new. You know, it's, it's new. It's people changing up their habits. Right. You know, and that's not always easy. But when you take that and, and show them what the benefits are, um, that makes a big difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's a great program, and I wish you, um, Enterprise Rideshare all the success in the world well, on this. Because the more vans on the road, the better for all of us. Yes, so thank you for coming absolutely. on the show. We hope you come again. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so I much. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you for having me. I'm Tim Apicella. This is Moving Hawaii Forward, and we'll see you uh, two weeks from now, Tuesday at noon. Thank you.